This podcast describes population change in Northern Ontario from 2001 to 2013 by the 11 census districts. Population change is shown as a cumulative year-over-year change using 2001 as the reference period. The change in any period represents the sum of annual changes since 2001. Historically, Northern Ontario's population peaked in 1993 at approximately 859,200, but has been gradually declining ever since. The following time series captures this decline from 2001 to 2013. Overall, Northern Ontario's population decreased by over 2%, with the central districts of Sudbury, Rainy River, Cochrane, Temiskaming, Algoma, and Thunder Bay declining the most. There are, however, some pockets of growth, particularly in the Kenora District as well as in the southernmost districts of Greater Sudbury, Manitoulin, Perry Sound, and Nipissing. From 2001 to 2002, the severity of the decline was evident when seven of the 11 districts experienced a population loss. Districts largely dependent on natural resources such as Algoma, Cochrane, Rainy River, Sudbury, and Temiskaming experienced a decline. In the Algoma District, for example, the Algoma Ore Division mine in Wawa closed. Some districts, however, are fighting against the trend. While Greater Sudbury is in a state of decline in 2002, the creation of the Sudbury Regional Network, the expansion of the telecommunications sector, the arrival of several retail box stores, and the upcoming boom in the mining sector has halted significant population loss. During this year, the districts of Kenora, Manitoulin, Nipissing, and Perry Sound had all experienced a population increase. In 2003, six districts saw an increase in population most likely due to the upswing in mining production and core mining prices. Greater Sudbury, Perry Sound, and Kenora are doing very well, seeing an increase of over 1%. Still, other districts continue to struggle. From 2002 to 2003, population in Sudbury and Temiskaming decreased by over 1%, while Nipissing experienced a slower growth rate from the years before, which could be the result of Weyerhaeuser closing the Sturgeon Falls Mill in October 2002. In 2004, districts of Greater Sudbury, Kenora, Manitoulin, Perry Sound, Nipissing, and Temiskaming all experienced slight annual increases, only the district of Sudbury continues to report a decline of over 1%. This positive trend continues into 2005. The cumulative population change displays growth for Greater Sudbury, Nipissing, Perry Sound, Manitoulin, and Kenora. In September of this year, the Northern Ontario School of Medicine opens campuses in Greater Sudbury and Thunder Bay. In Kenora, the population continues to grow, even with the weakened forest industry and the closure of an Abitibi consolidated mill which resulted in the loss of nearly 400 jobs. However, the population of Sudbury, Temiskaming, Cochrane, Algoma, and Rainy River districts continue on a downward trajectory. During 2006, the population continues to increase in Greater Sudbury, Perry Sound, Nipissing, Manitoulin, and Kenora. With the mining sector in full swing, Greater Sudbury experiences a 0.73% increase from the year before. This is the largest annual increase for the district during 2001 and 2013. Unfortunately, the forestry sector continues to falter and consequently Algoma, Cochrane, and Thunder Bay experience further population loss. In Timmins, the closure of the Grant Forest Products Strand Board Mill results in the loss of nearly 400 jobs. As forestry communities continue to struggle due to production decreases and mill closures, populations throughout eight districts experience a decline in 2007 from the year before. In the Algoma district, the Weyerhaeuser-oriented Strand Board Mill closes in Wawa, while Domtar closes a sawmill in White River. Even Kenora experiences a population loss, which is the only year it does between 2001 and 2013. During 2007, Greater Sudbury, Manitoulin, and Perry Sound were the only districts who experienced any kind of growth. Despite their struggles during 2007, in cumulative terms, the northernmost districts of Kenora and the southernmost districts of Perry Sound, Nipissing, Manitoulin, and Greater Sudbury are still reporting positive growth. The central districts are all reporting a cumulative decline. When the recession begins in 2008, the once strong mining sector starts to decline, and the forestry sector continues to struggle. Once again, numerous sawmills close their doors, notably in the Algoma district in Dubreville. Again, however, Kenora appears to be immune to these bouts of decline, reporting another annual increase.
With the recession hitting full force in 2009, population decreases are dominant throughout the region. Even the mining sector cannot save the region with the recession causing the price and demand for metals to drop. Only Kenora experiences a noticeable annual growth at 0.84%, while Manitoulin and Greater Sudbury remain stable with minimal growth. In Greater Sudbury, valet employees begin the longest strike in Inco valet history. During this stagnation, Extrata closes Craig Mine and Thayer Lindsay Mine and Marathon loses its Tembeck sawmill. As the strike at Valet continues into 2010, Greater Sudbury experiences a population loss during this year. Despite the loss, the district still experiences a cumulative population growth since 2001. In the Cochrane district, the drop in population can still be linked to the ongoing struggle in the forestry sector in such communities as Capiscasing and Iroquois Falls. In Timmins, Extrata closed its Kid Creek copper smelter and moved the operation to Rue Anne Noranda, Quebec. These setbacks push Cochrane's cumulative population loss over 6%. During this period, the telecommunications industry also weakens. In North Bay, Teletech closes its operation, putting roughly 200 employees out of work. Even with the closure in North Bay, the Nipissing District's cumulative growth remains over 1%. In 2011, Greater Sudbury population rebounds after undergoing a loss the previous year. The trend in growth in Greater Sudbury, Kenora, Manitoulin, Perry Sound, and Nipissing continues. The districts of Sudbury, on the other hand, has incurred a population loss exceeding 10% since 2001. The following year, in 2012, the telecommunications industry experienced more trouble, leading to further losses. Another Teletech location closes its doors, this time in Greater Sudbury, which had employed up to 700 people. Meanwhile, the forestry industry continues to struggle, and Resolute Forest Products shuts down its pulp and paper mill in Fort Francis. Perry Sound begins to experience population decline following the completion of the twinned highway construction in the area. In 2013, there is a general trend of decline from the year before. Only Manitoulin experiences noticeable growth. In Greater Sudbury, the opening of the School of Architecture at Laurentian University brings some optimism. The new program enrolls 70 students for the first term and employs seven full-time professors. Cumulative population change from 2001 to 2013 demonstrates that six of the 11 Northern Ontario districts experience a decline in population. These districts include Sudbury, Cochrane, Rainy River, Temiskaming, Algoma, and Thunder Bay. Much of the decline in Northern Ontario can be connected to an over-reliance on primary sectors. The forestry sector experienced a drastic decline during this time period because of a heavy reliance on a single export trade partner of raw forest products. When the United States housing market crashed and the softwood lumber tariff closely ensued, the forestry industry in northern Ontario was hard-pressed to remain viable. However, even after a series of setbacks, there are small signs of rejuvenation occurring between northern Ontario and its relationship with the forestry sector. In White River, the White River Forest Products Limited reopened and operations restarted at the sawmill in 2013. The mill was redeveloped as a privately held corporation funded and co-owned by the communities of White River and the Pickmorbert First Nation, with two other private shareholders. A second shift at the mill was scheduled to be added in 2014, and once fully operational, the company will directly employ approximately 90 people. The other five districts, Greater Sudbury, Kenora, Manitoulin, Nimbusing, and Perry Sound, experience a cumulative population growth from 2001 to 2013. Nipissing and Greater Sudbury experience a small growth, 1.2% and 2.4% respectively. This can be partly attributed to the diversity in the local economy. Perry Sound, meanwhile, experienced growth of nearly 54%, the result of the twinning of Highway 69-400 in the area, which brought construction employment and increased accessibility. However, construction on the highway in the region ended in 2010, and since 2012, the Perry Sound District suffered a population loss. The districts of Nipissing, Perry Sound, Greater Sudbury, and Manitoulin also benefit from its relative proximity to southern Ontario. The districts that experience the largest growth are Kenora and Manitoulin at 5.2% and 6.5%. Kenora is an exception 
being that its primary industry is forestry while still managing to experience a population growth during this period. The increase in these two districts can be attributed to the high birth rates and overall growth in the Aboriginal population. During this period, fluctuations in Northern Ontario's population can largely be associated with the boom and busts of the primary industry sectors such as forestry and mining. With reliance on these sectors significantly reduced, future trends are harder to predict. It is clear that economic opportunity and population remain closely connected.